So should I? Uh, uh, okay. Should I share my screen? Um, we're gonna start the opening ceremony first. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, because it's already 7 p.m., let's start this event. To our honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to all participants in this general lecture. I am Rivaldi Zidan Cristiando, and my friend is Izat. We are glad to be the master of ceremony in this general lecture. In this meeting, we have an insightful speaker from Brazil, Universidad de Tecnologica Federal do Parana, Professor Dr. Drauzio Eduardo Nareto Rangel. And also this really great coordinator and moderator, Dr. Laif Khalil Taufik Alani and Dr. Daria Sukmawati, Master of Science. At this general lecture, as we know, we are going to talk about inducing increased tolerance of the insect pathogen fungus, fungus metarhizium robesi to stress condition, which will be presented by Professor Drauzio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Dr. Diana Vivanti Sigit, Master of Science. Dr. Di uh, Diana, have you joined with us? Yes, I think so. I have already here. Okay. okay thank Dr. You. Diana, time is yours. Okay, thank you for uh, our Master of Ceremonies, Rivaldi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, uh, Bapak dan Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, our students of uh, biology department. Uh, it's very nice to meet you all of here. Uh, I would like to say hello to our special guest this night, uh, our honorable uh, speaker, Professor Rosio Eduardo from University Technological Federal do Parana from Brazil. Very nice to meet you here. And then uh, we have here the coordinator, Dr. Light Khalil. Taufit Al Ani from University of Baghdad, Iraq, and our moderator is uh, from State University of Jakarta, Dr. Dalia Sukmawati. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I, first of all, I would like to thank to all of the speakers here, and also I would like to say hello to our all of the coordinator study program from biology, from biology education, and from Magister of Biology Education. Uh, our students, all of you, uh, very nice to meet you here. And also I saw some uh, guests also, uh, I'm very sorry I cannot mention mention one by one. Uh, we have Bapak Budi Prakorso, Ili Fanil, Jeffrey. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for coming to this uh, guest lecture. Uh, as I am uh, on behalf of the Dean of Mathematics and Science uh, Faculty, I'm from the Vice Dean for Students Affair. I uh, would like to thank you very much from our uh, speakers here. It was very great uh, event, I think, guest lecture. And thank you for Ibu Dalia. Uh, I, I, I cannot mention it because this is the first time uh, we can uh, collaborate collaborate with a guest from Brazil. But nice to meet you, Dr. Drauzio, and also from Iraq. That was really so far from Jakarta. But uh, this night we meet together in this Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, another part thank is uh, we have a guest lecture regularly every year. We can uh, make it in two twice time or twice a uh, third time maybe something like that, and then uh, first for the 
first one is to just uh, invite from Indonesia and then for the three past year, uh, we also invite from our uh, friends from other countries. And this part is really great from Brazil and from Baghdad. Uh, I think for the students, uh, I'm sure they will get a lot of uh, knowledge, got a lot of insight from the topic this night. It is about fun just. I think it's, the title is quite uh, interesting for us here. Uh, and then it is about inducing increased tolerance of the insect pathogen fungus. Metalzium robet CE to stress condition. I think this is a great uh, topic. Uh, and I hope that we can collaborate, not just this night, but also for another event like research. Uh, we can do a lot of research and maybe we can send our students maybe, although by Zoom, although by Zoom only, because it is quite so far from here, Jakarta. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Okay, once again, thank you. Thank you very much for this event. So uh, let us begin begin uh, the opening uh, officially for this guest lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening for all of you. Thank you. And Rizaldi, we mm -hmm. give, I will give you this. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next I will be presented the CV of our speaker. Uh, 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 I will, okay, you're adding, okay. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker for today's general lecture. With an illustrious uh, career spanning numerous achievements and contributions in their field, our speaker is a true pioneer. Allow me to present a brief overview of their remarkable CV. Our distinguished speaker holds uh, a wealth of experience and expertise in microbiology. Professor Drozio has earned his uh, degree, Doctor of Philosophy from Utah, Utah State University, USA, with dissertation in, uh, entitled Genetic and Phenotypic Variability of Metarhizium aniosophilae for virulence uh, and tolerance to UVB radiation and heat. And also, uh, Professor Dozio has a very inspiring professional experience, having previously, uh, previously served as a research assistant research assistant um, and graphic designer, ecotourism guide, biologist, manager of the delicate station, and um, the full research uh, professor from Universidad Tecnologica Federal de Parana. And then, um, Professor Dozier is interested in research on insect pathogen physiology, photobiology, and UV radiation. Throughout uh, uh, his career, our speaker has held permanent positions at esteemed institutions and organizations. Um, they have uh, served a chairman and organizer. Organizer. Um, Sorry, organizer um, at the International Fungal Biology Conference and International Symposium on Fungal Stress. Our uh, speaker's work has earned them numerous honors and awards. One of them is the Fellowship for Research Productivity Award from National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, 
of Brazil. And then um, he has obtained many research grants has been selected. as a speaker in many general lectures and also uh, a lot of publications. Please join me in giving a warm round of applause to our esteemed speaker as they take the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sh should I uh st share my screen or you're going to share my screen uh all right professor Drozio, we are gonna listen some of speech from this lecture coordinator first uh, uh this, okay. this lecture coordinator is dr light talil taufik from university uh, okay yeah uh -huh. okay, and then Thank you. presenting TV of Dr. Light. Mm -hmm. They're speaking now for me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, how are you? And uh, good evening for, for you now and night. Uh, thank you first for Dr. Dalia and uh, Prof. Uh, Darazia to speaking about, uh, to share in this uh, meeting and uh, speaking about metallurgium. Uh, and also thank you for uh, the University of Jakarta. It is very interesting. And after I contact with Dr. Daria, I found uh, the University of Jakarta. It is uh, interested in uh, progress and development in scientific research by providing important modern uh, equipment in the field of biological science, such as the field of microorganisms, including fungi. Uh, the subject of metallurgium is very interesting for the tropical area, and, uh, uh, and th this is a very useful fungi because the uh, metallurgium is. Uh, not found uh, causing uh, infected uh, infection, any infection for a human or for animal or for uh, a plant. That in this case we can use it using uh, against uh, many uh, or, uh, in a, uh, many many of organism that uh, like uh, can using it to control uh, insects uh, using to control uh, mites and also uh, uh, using to control nematodes using to con control uh, ticks mm -hmm. that uh, like that metallurgium using to control like mel uh, of, of nematode also that uh, they found the uh, can using to control varroa mites and the red spider uh, mites also the tick uh, some doctors and um, like the name jessica using uh, against tick and on cattle uh, also that if they found the uh, can using uh, as endo fighting fungi uh, of many plants, the when in the fighting fungi uh, can increase root of hair uh, development in young plants, also the translocate uh, nitrogen from insect uh, cadavers uh, and uh, increase the biomass of groups groups and uh, treating this with the uh, metallurgium can using by treating the uh, seeds. Uh, or inoculated uh, seedling uh, by root dips and leaf sprays also on the stem uh, injections. Therefore, this metallurgium fungi is, and you need to more study about this fungi and uh, maybe you, uh, in, uh, using in as uh, biopesticides. And thank you for all student uh, for researchers and students to share in this uh, uh, speaking or uh, this meeting also. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lai, thank for your you, Dr. Light. I will um, come. Next. Okay, next we will start our discussion. But before that, this discussion will be placed, will be led by Dr. Dahlia as a moderator. Uh, then can you read moderator of Dr. Dahlia first? Hey, um, next I will read the CV of our moderator, Dr. Dalia Sukmawati, Master of Science. Dr. Uh, Dalia uh, was born in Tasikmalaya on September 14, 1973, and Dr. Dalia is a member of uh, the Indonesian My Mycological Society and the member of the Forum Communication for Indonesian Culture Collection. Also a member of uh, UNGCC and WDCM. And Dr. Delia is uh, interested in research on fungi and fermented food, fruit flowers, and their role in ecosystems using modern molecular techniques in microbial genomics. And also uh, she works on the isolation of fungi and produce enzymes, biological control, mycotoxins, and exploitation for secondary metabolites. Dr. Dahlia has earned her uh, Master of Science and degree of uh, Doctor, of Philosophy, Doctor of Philosophy at the Universitas of Indonesia with the subject taxonomy and fungi and yeast and their bioperspect. Uh, Dr. Dahlia has very good skill in uh, microtechnology, plant disease detection, diagnosis, and identification using conventional biochemistry and molecular methods. And then Dr. Dahlia has done a lot of research, one of which is um, taxonomy and uh, ecological studies of yeast and fungi on uh, Brosonetia papyrifera, funded by Universitas Indonesia. Also, uh, she has published many excellent articles. Okay, that's um, okay. Enough. Thank you. Uh, I will send to Izat. Okay. Hello, Dr. Dahlia. Hi. Okay. Oh are... Okay, all right, because Dr. Dahlia was ready to lead this discussion, Dr. Dahlia will take over this lecture. Here, Dr. Dahlia, time is yours. Ya, Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alamin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, the Honorable, our Vice Dean, Dr. Diana Vivanti, thank you very much for joining with us and support us to be this general lecture. Uh, this is very very incredible good, uh, evening. Uh, welcome to all, all of the participants. And with my great pleasure to, to introduce our speaker with not uh, very long is uh, about this uh, general lecture. Please welcome Professor Dr. Dorozio Eduardo Natiro Rajal from University Technological Federal, Panama, Brazil to uh, speak. Uh, please welcome Prof. Uh, Derozio. Do you want to share with yourself or uh, in with our committee? Thank you very much, Dr. Dahlia. Thank you. Yes, please. Time is yours now. So uh, I present my talk, you know? Okay. Yes, no. yes, Prof, please. Okay, 
So let me share my screen. Is everyone's uh, looking at my screen? Yes, of course. Yes. But can you set slideshow, Prof? Okay. Uh, just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I like to. I'm very honored uh, by this invitation by Dr. Dahlia and Dr. Light uh, to give this talk uh, to Indonesia and the uh, Iraq. Uh, so I'm really happy uh, giving this talk. So as you presented in my title already, I'm not going to go through. Uh, so uh, I really like the presentation for my talk. Uh, before I go uh, show my talk, uh, I would like to present a little bit about Brazil because we are so far from Iraq and Indonesia. Uh, I really would like to visit this country uh, sometimes. So Brazil is the only country that speaks Portuguese in South America. So all other countries uh, around the Brazil speaks Spanish. Uh, so we have uh, many uh, countries. I never been in many of them, just being uh, in countries like Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, and the and the uh, 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 Colombia. Uh, so Brazil is very a very large country. Uh, I am now I moved the last October from the state of São Paulo. That is this ready to the state of Paraná, that is this yellow, dark yellow. And then we are very in the west of Paraná, near Iguaçu Falls, I'm going to show you soon. So we have 26 states, and the country is so big that I was able to visit only 15 states. Uh, the, all the other states that doesn't have these pins, uh, it's... Uh, the, uh, I didn't visit. So the country is divided in five different regions. The north is the very biggest uh, uh, region that you have the Acre, uh, Amazon, uh, Roraima, Rondônia, uh, Pará, and the, uh, I have seen my presentation of my map. Sorry, the slide is not moving, bro. It's simply your slide. Oh, it's not moving? I'm yes. sorry. Uh, uh, so, so your presentation. No, it's moving. Uh, I'm going to present it this way. I don't know why. So I'm going to, go, uh, okay. Just uh, to, to present it this way. It's okay for you? I don't know why it was not mm -hmm. moving. Okay. So, uh, so the, coming back, uh, so Brazil is this country, it's a very big country, and it's the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese, and this, all the other countries here uh, speak is Spanish. So in Brazil, we have uh, five different regions, North, Northeast, Central West, 
uh, southeast and south. This region here is the biggest region, and the, the Amazon itself, this part here. Uh, I'm going to show some picture of Amazon soon. Uh, this region is very dry uh, region. It's kind of desertic, uh, not close to the ocean, but the, uh, inside here is very, very desertic place. Uh, in this region here, we have in Central East, it's the savannas, uh, and it's very dry too. Uh, these two regions, south and southeast, is very wet, uh, have very wet seasons, and it was covered by forest, but it, it's, the forest is only just near the ocean. So, and then I am living now in this dot here that call dois vizinhos. In English, it is two neighbors. And it's very close to Iguazu Falls, I'm going to show, show you soon. So this, uh, since we came to Brazil, my, my American wife, she's bugging, bugging me to go to Amazon, but he, it's so expensive to go from Sao Paulo to Amazon that he, we can go to Sao Paulo to Florida or United States by the same price. So we went to Amazon last, last August, and this is the, uh, we call Black River, and this is called Sulimões. As you can see, this is the state in Manaus, uh, and the, the Black River comes this way, and this is uh, the Sulimões River comes this way, and both forms the Amazonas River. So for a long time, the Black River is very black, like this color. They don't, they have a, a division in the middle. So part of the Solimões is brown and the part of the, uh, and the Black River is black. This river, this Black River is, uh, you can see about two or three meters below the surface. It's a very, uh, the water is, is uh, very clear. But uh, when you go to the Solimões, that is this one, uh, is very turbid. You cannot see uh, uh, like he, one hand behind, below the surface. And they, the two rivers, they run together for about 100 kilometers. And then they mix it and then uh, but as soon after the two rivers mix it together, like here, they become the Amazon River. So this region, Amazon, uh, is uh, governed by the river. As you can see, this big tree, I, uh, I, I could not go to this tree, but I was in the boat. I was in the boat. And then I probably, my height will be like this, this height. It's a huge tree. And then uh, it was too much to walk there. So I, I want to walk, but he, soon my feet enter 25 centimeters in the mud. So I didn't go there. And then you can see the marks of water here. So the Amazon goes up and down every year. It goes up and down. So people that live in this uh, near here, they live in houses like that. They put uh, two big trunks of a tree uh, under their house. These trun trunks can be uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it, it's, it's uh, floats for years. So they, they use the two big trunks and they construct the house on the, the trunks. So the house go up and down. Uh, 
so this is my daughter and the monkey. And this is the forest. There is a huge tower that we, we go for about it, uh, 15 floors. And then you can see the, uh, the forest at the, uh, from the top. So this is the city of dois vizinhos. Uh, eu, the word eu means I uh, in Portuguese. I love dois vizinhos. And dois means two. Vizinhos me, means neighbor. So I'm going to present my talk uh, about the uh, part of uh, my uh, PhD that was done at Utah State University. If he, uh, uh, if you don't uh, understand, please ask me. If you don't hear me for internet problems, please tell me. So this is my professor, Donald Roberts. Uh, he died two years ago at 88 years old. There's a problem with your slideshow. Clayton said. Huh? There's a problem with your slideshow. Really? Yeah. Ask him anyway. Oh. Is, a, is my slideshow can see, can be seen? Can, you can see my, my professor here. Yes, you can see, but not slideshow, but it's okay, bro. You can see, okay. Can see, okay. So you can see my professor and me here. Okay, yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. very handsome, bro. So, okay, thank you. Uh, so everything started when my professor, Donald Roberts, brought me some insects to the lab. And he asked me something. So before I continue, I need to tell that he, I went to the United States without no English at all. I didn't understand. I could not speak. I read, I just read English. And he told me something uh, to, and brought so, uh, the, some insects and told me something. Uh, of course, his wife, May Roberts, this laid here, uh, she figured out that when I, I have a big smile, uh, is that I didn't understand anything. So uh, she said to Don, Don, Drauz is not understanding what you are talking about. Because when he smile, he is not understanding. But uh, Okay. I don't know. Huh? You have to put the slideshow. No, I, I, I could not. Okay. So, and every day after he said he gave me the insects, he comes to the lab and he asks, How is the experiment with insects? So, what I was, well, the first day I said, Okay. The second day I said, okay. One week I said, okay. And every day, of course, he's asking about the experiment. I was already very ashamed because I didn't understand him what he, I need to do with insects. And I asked the one co colleague to ask him, my professor again, uh, what he, he wants to, uh, me to do. So, uh, my, my colleague from the lab, he said, Drauz, we infect some the insects. After the death of insects, pick up some conidia from the cadavers and compare the UVB tolerance with conidia from PGA medium, potato destrosi, agar, and yeast extract. And then for me, I was... For me, I was happy and I started to do my experiment. So I infected this tenebrio uh, larvae, it's a beetle larvae. And then you can see the spores on the top of the insect. And then I discovered 
that uh, when the uh, co uh, conidia produce the on insect cadavers, they uh, oops, they are less tolerant than conidia produce the own medium. So this is the conidia produce the on cadavers of Galeria melonella, that's a, a lepidoptera, a moth. And this is conidia produced on the larvae of a, a Zophaga morio, that's a, a coleoptera. So I was very, uh, I was very uh, interested about this. And then uh, I tested the another isolate, and the other isolate just gave the same results. So I was. Uh, by the way, before I continue, I spent 10 years after my, uh, my graduation in working at a printing company. So when I, was, I went to the United States, uh, my, my knowledge was very poor. So I started to uh, uh, read the, about this because there was not the, nothing in the literature about it, uh, what the, I saw I see I saw in these results. So this is the beginning of my students studies studies and it was published in 2004. Oops. Uh, oops. Okay. So uh, this study broadened my hor horizons and it really got my juice flowing. In studying for this interesting phenomenon, I found that when microorganisms grow under harsh stress condition, they may be become more tolerant to other stress. This is Dr. Wayne Nicholson. He works at the Kennedy Space Center in, in Florida and he also at the University of Florida. And he collected some bacteria spores in the desert of Sonora. Uh, and the, these bacteria spores are from the sand of the desert, are two folds or two times more tolerant than the same bacteria when produced in the laboratory. So, uh, Dr. Naresh Magam, uh, he, he died a month ago, and we are very sad about him. He was a very amazing person. Uh, I really liked him. I, I met him uh, once. Uh, and he said in his papers that tolerance of metahysium to osmotic stress may be improved by physiological manipulation of the endogenous trehalose and manitol in conidia. Anita Panek, she's uh, po Polish, but she worked in Brazil for 50 years at the University, uh, University of Rio de Janeiro. And then she also worked the of regulation of trihalose metabolism in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And then she said that the endogenous yeast trihalose protects it against heat, ethanol, and the oxidative damage. Uh, Dr. Anita Panecki moved back to Poland, and she's about nine years old now. Uh, and then she continued. Uh, 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 she's giving talks in Poland, and the, she's an amazing person too. And do, Dr. Johan Tevelein from Belgium, uh, he also worked with endogenous trihalose in yeast that protects against the heat, frost, dehydration, and ethanol. Recently, uh, Dr. Nir. Uh, Oshirov from 
uh, Israel. Uh, he defined the priming uh, also referred as uh, acquired stress resistance adaptive response or cost protection. It is defined as the exposure of an organism to a mild stress that leads to development of a subsequent longer, stronger and more protective response. This memory of a previously encountered stress likely provides a strong survival advantage in rapidly shifting environment. So therefore, the insect pathogenic fungus, Metahizio roberts, may be more tolerant to stress and more prone to infect insects in the field. If you produce this, this fungus uh, in, con in condition of stress. So uh, my question is, could it be possible to improve the conidial tolerance of Metahizio roberts to UVB radiation and the other conditions by cross protection. So uh, in most of my studies, I use this Metahizio Roberts isolated r 2575 that was isolated from South Carolina. This fungus uh, is a very important agent for biological control of insects. It is one of the most studied and used to control insects agricultural pests and vector of human disease. Uh, in Brazil, uh, we are uh, producing this fungus for many decades now. And then in 2008, uh, we did a survey and then one million of hectares was being uh, sp spread with metahizum metahizum species. In 2018, it doubled to 2 billion hectares. In this year, I asked the, my colleague Marcos Faria, uh, and he said that he, they are uh, metahizum and the other insect pathogens are being spread in 10 million hectares. Uh, Dr. Sergio Mazzaro, that is a professor in my university, said uh, in about, uh, that in about five to 10 years, Brazil will not use chemical insecticides anymore, which is great because it uh, protects the environment and the, uh, we have no, uh, less pollution in, in the, and then, our food will be much better. This is a, a paper published this year by Dr. Marcos Faria, that's Brazilian, and Dr. Tariq Bati, that's from UK. And the, uh, to avoid the registrations of metahizium, uh, because if you're going to sell metahizium to a farm, you need to register this product. This product. And then registration is very costly. It's, uh, uh, I don't know how much, but he, it's about, he, I would say about $70,000 to register one product. So metahizum is now being produced on farming uh, or other, so the farms can produce and can spread on their own farm without any registration. And this increased a lot the uh, use of this fungi in agriculture because uh, they don't need the registration. They produce the product, the metahizum or boveria or trichoderma, and they spray in their own land. So this is a metahizum Robertsi that was killed by uh, uh, kill a, a grasshopper. And this is a metahizum acridum that he uh, killed also a grasshopper. Well, talking about the stress, uh, you can see that the, the fungus uh, can uh, 
in the life cycle, it is uh, prone to several types of stress. If he is outside in the environment, it, it, uh, the fungus will need to survive it through UVB radiation from sun, the heat from sun, oxidative stress, low and high humidity, osmotic stress, and the lack of nutrients. When the insect uh, enter in the insect body, the insect body start to produce oxidative stress. Uh, grasshoppers, they can do a behavioral fever where the body goes to 47 degrees Celsius. Uh, the insects can start in melanization, that is also uh, causes stress to the fungus. Uh, stress, osmotic stress, and the also lack of the, uh, uh, nutrients and the antimicrobials. So outside, inside the insect, the fungus will need to cope against several types of stress. So I make this figure. This is not a metahysium, this is Aspergillus niger. But since it is uh, cute, I used it for, for my presentation. I now uh, test the several stress conditions during my cellular growth. Uh, and then after the conidia was produced under this stress, uh, I pick up the conidia and then test the two other stress. So here we have heat, uh, alkali and the acids, lack of uh, carbon, carbohydrates, uh, magnetic field, electric field, light, uh, antagonism caused by trichoderma, uh, some poisons, a lack of oxygen by hypoxia and the anoxia, uh, and the stre osmotic stress. So after I grew the fungus on all uh, separately, of course, in all of these kind of stresses, I exposed the conidia to UVB radiation, heat, or other stress condition. Starting by the nutritive stress. So this medium, we use the PDAY, the potato strassi agar, supplemented with 1% of yeast extract. A minimum medium, that's uh, the Xapec medium without sucrose. Uh, or minimum medium plus 3% of a uh, sol carbon source. And then we can see here that the minimum medium uh, induce very high tolerance to UVB radiation, uh, three times more than conidia production PJ medium. But some carbon sources, that is 3% uh, of uh, some carbon sources, for example, uh, lactose, uh, arabitose, fructose, it also induce higher conidial tolerance to UVB radiation. But as you can see, the conidial production here is very low for minimum medium. Uh, otherwise, you cannot use the fungus producing minimum medium to uh, apply agriculture because it would be nonsense. This is the production of PDA, and the other carbon sources are produce much less conidia than the PGA. But he, we found it very, very interesting that lactose is a carbon source that induces uh, also uh, a high conidial tolerance to UVB radiation. So uh, we extracted the trehalose and manitol from uh, only four of these, uh, these cultures. And then 
we didn't extract the trehalose from the PGA, uh, conidia from PGA medium, because the PGA medium has a lot of trehalose and mannitol, so it will have a, uh, will not be correct. So we use the minimum medium plus glucose, minimum medium, minimum medium plus lactose, and minimum medium plus myonositol. And you can see that the minimum medium and minimum medium plus lactose produce a lot more uh, trehalose inside the conidia than minimum medium plus glucose. The same thing, minimum medium and minimum medium plus lactose produce a lot more manitol inside the conidia than the minimum medium plus glucose or minimum medium plus myonositol. So, trehalose and manitol are known to accumulate in high amounts of cells under stress conditions. The mostly by when is under nutritive stress or other stress conditions, but not when cells are grown on rich medium. This is trehalose and this is the manitol. Trehalose stabilizes proteins in their native state and preserves the integrity of membranes. And the manitol uh, protects cells by scavenging toxic intermediate uh, oxygen intermediates, that is, uh, reactive oxygen species. So the nutritive stress increased the tolerance to UV uh, to radiation, and conidia produces nutritive stress, also is correlated to increase the trehalose and manitol content in conidia. But you can see here, we need the eight plates of a uh, minimum medium to produce a similar amount uh, than one plate of PDA medium. Uh, and uh, you can see the rule behind the plate here. So uh, if you put this in the microscope, you can see some chains of conidia, but a very little production. So uh, somebody asked me if he, when the conidia came from minimum medium, and then you transfer this conidia to PGA medium, the tolerance should be the same. And then this answer is not. So when you transfer, uh, produce the conidia on PGA medium uh, to minimum medium, uh, conidia from minimum medium be very tolerant. This is PGA medium to PGA medium, uh, low tolerance. Minimum medium to medium medium, uh, the second generation, a high tolerance. But when you have a minimum medium to uh, PGA medium, so it lost the tolerance. So it's a plus, uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't change, if you, it just changes the tolerance if you go, if you produce the conidia or minimum medium. So uh, now uh, this was during my PhD, I test the heat shock that is represented by uh, uh, infrared radiation here. For the heat shock, <coughs> I use the, this solar simulator here that increased the temperature of the petri dishes up to 45 degrees in only 25 minutes. And then I give it the heat shock. It is control, not heat shock. I give it the heat shock on the second day of the growth, on the third day of growth, and the fourth day of growth. And also I gave it heat shock uh, on the second, third, and fourth day. Also, I gave heat shock using an incubator at 45, 45 degrees. 
uh, and this incubator reached the plate reached 45 degrees in 40 minutes. So after uh, it's not appear here, I did the same thing uh, like I did here. So these are the plates uh, with seven days old cultures after the heat shock. Control uh, very well, uh, uh, producing a lot of spores. Uh, when you give the uh, heat shock if a incuba incubator or infrared radiation, uh, on the second, third, fourth day, it really damaged the uh, growth. When you give the heat shock in the second day, uh, it was already producing some uh, conidia. On the third day, it also damaged a lot the growth. And in the fourth day, it didn't do very much. It was, uh, did a lot of production already. So uh, uh, the third day was the cultural, and the second, third, day, fourth day, of, of course, was the culture that it caused great damage. But after 14 days, all these cultures was already fully producing uh, conidia, like the control. And then uh, we dis discovered that he, for UV tolerance, conidia produced on the third day uh, uh, was uh, more tolerant than conidia produced in control, and put conidia produced uh, uh, in plates it shocked the, on the second day. And the fourth day and the all days together also was similar. And then both the, uh, techniques, uh, uh, heat shock by if, uh, infrared radiation or heat shock by uh, convention gave the same, basically the same results. For heat, uh, we can see that the third day was the best day to induce higher tolerance. Uh, but he, as you can see, uh, here, uh, in the third day, we have a peak in trehalose production, accumulation, and uh, also a peak in monitor accumulation. But you can see that the, this peak uh, is not as high as minimum medium. Minimum medium is always producing a lot of trehalose. And then uh, heat shock didn't produce lots of trehalose. So also during my PhD, I tested the osmotic stress uh, and the, I used the culture medium PDA for control or PDA supplemented with the sodium chloride or potassium chloride. And then uh, it was interesting that we see a kind of stair here. Uh, when you increase in the concentration, you increase also the tolerance to UVB radiation. By one molar of KCL, uh, it was uh, increasing a lot of uh, tolerance. So I tested also oxidative stress using the product of menadione that induce uh, oxidative stress. Uh, and then also control, it's just PGAY medium, and treatment PGA with 0 0.1 uh, millimolar of menadione. For UVB radiation, it did not increase tolerance, but for heat, it did increase tolerance. Also, I tested salicylic acid because my co-advisor, Ann Anderson, she was a plant pa uh, uh, pathogen professor. So she gave me some salicylic acid. And then uh, for UVB, salicylic acid did not induce a higher tolerance to UVB. Uh, now I always use the minimum medium as a control. But if for heat, salicylic acid really induced the higher tolerance to heat. 
Is it, uh, you can hear well my talk? Okay, thank you. Uh, this now in my uh, current studies, uh, my student from Mexico last year, uh, she used the, the product Congo Red that he causes uh, cell wall stress. And then she published this paper uh, this month he, uh, in fungal biology. Uh, we tested the, the fungus producing Congo Red uh, to several stress conditions, but it, it just induced uh, uh, higher tolerance to UVB radiation. So, but uh, as you can see, the tolerance of conidia produced on Congo Red, uh, it's less tolerant than conidia produced on minimum medium. It is it's going to be always like that. Also, uh, this is during my PhD studies. I tested the acid and the alkali uh, in the medium. Então, control, conidia produced on PDAY, pH 6.9, and treatment, Conidia produce some PDA, PDB, uh, potato dystrophy brought because the agar, a, so, a certain pH, it doesn't uh, solidify. So the pH adjusts with sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid. And then uh, the acid, uh, Conidia produced on acid medium. It did induce higher tolerance to UV radiation, but conidia produced on, uh, on pH, uh, uh, alkali pH, it induced higher conidia production, uh, tolerance. So, uh, six months before I finished my PhD, I, uh, this was kind of lucky. Uh, I have a dream that I, I exposed the fungus to visible light. And then I went to the lab. I did the exper experiments. For my luck, all the studies that I presented before, uh, the conidia were, were produced in the dark. So I went to the lab and put one plate in, under the light for 14 days, directly under the light and one plate for 14 days in the dark. This is new studies, but uh, we have, I was quite amazed that light induced certain tolerance to heat, uh, but it's not as compared to minimum medium, of course. This is control, could uh, produce in light, could produce in minimum medium. To UVB radiation, also it induces the higher tolerance to uh, conidia produced in the light, conidia produced in the dark, and conidia produced in minimum, minimum medium. Um, but of course, you can see that it is less tolerant than conidia produced on minimum medium. Uh, so, uh, for osmotic stress, I uh, grill conidia produced in the dark, light, medium, medium, and then tested it to uh, pot potassium chloride. So, uh, conidia produced uh, under the light was more tolerant than conidia produced in the dark. But uh, when you increase the concentration of potassium chloride, you decrease the tolerance of conidia produced in the light as compared to minimum medium. And finally, to oxidative stress using menadione, this is conidia produced in the dark, conidia produced in the light, and conidia produced uh, on minimum medium. Uh, but uh, at is 0.10 millimolar, uh, you can see that it's both are similar, but when you increase to 0.15 millimolar, uh, only conidia produced on minimum medium is uh, continue alive. 
So I also tested the several types of light. So red, green, and blue light. I, I have a lock uh, also that he, these lamps, uh, the LED lamps, appear just after uh, I, I got this project. Before uh, I was planning to use different filters, but these lamps are quite amazing. Uh, uh, so I bought uh, four lamps and they adjust to the incubators and then it works very nicely. Also, I, I purchased uh, uh, this growth chamber for Percival model E30 LAD. And then that is this chamber here. And then this is the, uh, uh, this is the irradiances of the lamp. This is the blue light that is uh, from this incubator here. And this is the blue light from this incubator. And then we see that the Conida produces a minimum medium to uh, it's more tolerant to UVB radiation, followed by Conidia produced in the low irradiance blue light, and followed by Conidia produced under white light. This is the control, and then Conidia producing blue light, higher radiance, green light, and red light were less tolerant than Conidia produced in the dark. Uh, also, we did some uh, real-time PCR, and then we see uh, these results here was not what we expected. So here, white light induced the higher uh, heat shock protein 101, but you can see that the minimum medium induced the highest amount of heat shock protein 30 and heat shock protein 101. Uh, but here it's strange that the uh, red light induces higher uh, than heat shock protein 30 than visible light, white light. So uh, also I studied the uh, hypoxia and the anoxia conditions. For the hypoxia, I seal the plates three times of a, a parafilm. Então, the plates were sealed three times. Uh, for anoxia, the plates uh, were, the, the fungus grow for 24 hours for 24 hours under just a minute. Just a minute, to, to, uh, some problem here. Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay, so for uh, anoxia, uh, the fungus was grown for 24 hours in normal oxygen. And then we move these plates to a, a, a anoxic chamber. Uh, and this was published this year by my PhD student, Alberi Silva. Uh, we found it interesting also these results. Uh, so the white is control. The light gray is when the fungus was in, under hypoxic stress, when the plate was uh, fixed, uh, were 
put it three times the film, and then a Hanok where the plates were uh, kept in an, an aerobic chamber. So you can see that he, uh, the fungus from control, just in normal air, uh, it was very susceptible to UVB radiation. But when uh, in a, a, a hypoxic, it was very tolerant, similar to culture producing minimum medium, Conidia producing minimum medium. But the anoxic was less tolerant than uh, Conidia producing hypoxic. But your, of course, it was more tolerant than Conidia produced uh, in the control. And this is another study that he, I did. Uh, it, it was published, uh, the, I forgot, it, in 2018. Uh, we use the biotic stress. Uh, this, I used it, the fungus trichoderma troviriti uh, in dual culture with the uh, Metahizio Roberts. Uh, this fungus here is the Tricoderma troviridi, and this Metahizio roberts. In this plate, we put the fung both fungus together. So Metahizio and Tricoderma the same day. In this, uh, in this plate here, just a minute. In this plate here, I grew the, I, I inoculated the fungus beta -hysium. And then uh, two days later, I inoculated the fungus tricoderma. In this, I inoculated the fungus beta -hysium. And four days late, later, I inoculated the fungus tricoderma. And this, uh, I inoculated the fungus beta -hysium. And then six days later, I inoculated the fungus tricoderma. But even though six days later, Tricoderma always will grow a lot more than Metahysium. So uh, we tested to UVB radiation. Uh, então, A0, A2, so A0, A2, A4, and A6. Uh, and then the a0 and A2, the conidia was basically dead without no viability, very little viability. But the conidia produced, uh, conidia produced in the cultures A4 and A6, that is these two. It was more tolerant than conidia produced and control. And this is going to produce some minimum medium. Of course, the minimum medium is always high. Also, I tested the for osmotic stress. It was uh, mo show more difference. Uh, need to produce some minimum medium. Conidia produced on uh, good cultural A4. And Conidia produced the, on cultural A6. And here is the control. Any condition produced on Q2, A0, and A2 was uh, basically dead. So this for me was very interesting because even a biotic stress can cause uh, increasing uh, priming in metahysium roberts. This was done uh, I started done before the pandemic uh, using a uh, uh, magnetic field and the electric field. So when I started this study, I, uh, I used the equipment from our university and then they started uh, 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 
they uh, and then I continue again last year. Uh, yeah, last year I continue again, and then I got very interesting results. So for this experiment, I used the uh, magnetic field that is produced by this equipment here, and the electric field produced by this equipment here. I, sh I think I have a better figure here. So this is the Helmholtz coil, uh, and it give a magnetic field around 10 millitesla. And then you can see the plate was here. All this uh, equipment was Uh, uh, and this is the two parallel plates, metal plates. You can see the petri dishes here. And then one plate have a positive pole, and then the other plate a negative pole. And then the electric field field was about 100 volts per centimeter per centimeter. Uh, so, uh, just prof times is yes. Expensive. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you miss something? Uh, the time is over, prof. Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, so, just saying that the magnetic field and electric field induce yes. the higher tolerance to osmotic stress, oxidative stress, heat, and UVB radiation. Oh, so to finalize, uh, this is a paper produced, public, published by Nicholas Bonney in 2021. He says, fungal hyphae show exquisite sensitivity to their environment. This reactiveness is demonstrated by many levels from changes in form of hyphae resulting from alterations in pattern of exocytosis, to membrane excitation in, me in the mechanism of wound, wound repair. Growing if I detect, detect ridges on surfaces and response to restrictions in their physical sp space. These are expression of cellular consciousness. Fungal mycelium show decision making and they alter their development patterns in response to interaction, interactions with the other organism. And my mycelia even be capable to spatial recognition and learning couple of a facility to short term memory. Now it's fruitful time to recognize the study of fungal etology as a distinctive discipline of mycology. So this is also because money publishing this uh, journal Psych. And then my student uh, came to me two years ago. She said, Professor, could you test the if the fungus metahesium uh, uh, respond to Reiki? Uh, so for Brazil, Reiki is new. Uh, and then I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I didn't know what it was Reiki. So she explained what was what it was Reiki. And then uh, this is my student doing Reiki in the fungus, in the petri dish. Amazing. Reiki induce higher conidial tolerance to heat as compared to control without Reiki. And it was similar to minimum medium. Uh, but when you do, uh, increase the time, uh, minimum medium is always higher. So for me, we, we did seven repetitions because I was not believing. Seven different repetitions in different months. So for me, this study was quite amazing. I, I don't know where to publish now because uh, people will not understand, will not believe. Uh, you from Indonesia probably know well, Heike. Okay. Uh, so 
In conclusion, the majority of stress condition given during mitochondrial growth and metabolism induce at certain levels increased stress tolerance. However, nutritive stress during mycelial growth induces the highest conidial tolerance due to trehalose, mannitol, and heat shock proteins. Uh, these are my students. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with you all my students. Uh, and then these former students. These are my current students. Uh, that's Yukilene, who did the experiment with Heike. Eliane, Valeria, and the Denise. And these are my students from my er, uh, former university that I left in the, last, last year. And this is my daughter initiating her studies. Among, her name is Amanda. Uh, this is my daughter. This is my current lab. My daughter, Amanda. My student, Clady, from Mozambique, Mozambique. And my two students from Brazil, and Anseli, Hamiseli, and me. And then I really thankful for Donald Roberts and his wife, May Roberts. Uh, I give you, I, every day I pray for them because they gave me the a great, greatest honor to be, uh, to work with them. Uh, in, and in my life you will not be, diff, it will, not, will be very different if I didn't go to study with Donald Roberts. So this I just inviting you for the fifth International Symposium from the Stress that you'll be in this beautiful scenery, uh, Iguazu Falls, and you'll be September 2024. I hope you can come. Thank you so much. It is a great honor. Sorry if I pass a little bit of my time. I was get, having fun here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Dorizio. It's very, very insightful, very valuable, and very great and deep about the stress tolerance of the meta resume. Uh, uh -huh. I would like to say this is very successful general lecture. Thank you very much for Dr. Lei to introduce you to Universitas Negeri Jakarta, Prof. Dorzio. Mm -hmm. And thank you to all of my students. It will be honor for me. Uh, that's because all of my students, we can do this uh, general lecture. And for the, uh -huh. all of the participants, uh, Prof. Dorzio, uh, this is not just from in uh, Universitas Negeri Jakarta, but they come from another university, and it uh -huh. will be very great and honor for us to welcome to all of the participants. For the first time, it's almost one hundred Prof. Dorzio. This is uh, yes, I saw that. I'm yeah. really happy, and I hope this is not just for the last time. I hope this is for uh -huh. the first time we make collaboration with uh, Brazil, Iraq, and uh, University Negeri Jakarta, and for the all of the university around the Indonesia. Uh, yes, thank you uh, much, it should be uh, great. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Prof. And uh, before I mention the conclusion, I would like to ask the participant in this Zoom, uh, who wants to the, ask the professor, please raise the, uh -huh. your hand. Uh, is any in this uh, Zoom want to ask the professor, please? Uh, maybe uh, for the slideshow, you, uh, can you stop, Prof? Uh, that's, uh, yes, one. I stop. Yes. Uh, let me see. Uh, stop stop for the... sharing. Okay. It's it stop sharing now. Yes. Go. Uh, okay. Stop sharing. Okay. Uh, is any in this uh, Zoom wants to uh, ask, please raise hand. Or if not, I would like to uh, mention some of the participants already asked uh, for Dorzio. 
I would like to uh, mention for the some of the question. Uh, this is from Budi Prakorso. Will the induced tolerant trade permanent? Uh, uh, Mr. Budi Prakorso asks uh, you, Prof. Will uh, all of the stress will to, uh, will treat the permanent for the this metarizium? If he, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. If it is stress, yes, it is permanent uh, or not. The psychology, the physiology of the they can. Uh, that can tolerance for the stress, for the stress, for the hypoxia. This is for permanent or not? Um, just a minute. My computer is is. Uh, let me see if he. Uh, just a just minute. A minute. Yeah. Can you can hear, hear me? me? Yeah, of course. Uh... Can, you say something? Can you say something? Uh, uh, so, so uh, can you ask me again, again the question, the please? Question, please. Uh, okay, I would like to conclusion about uh, Bintara, Farhana, and uh, Budi, uh, Mr. Budi Prakorso uh, asked uh, you about uh, in this in this stress, it will be permanent or not. As you mentioned, uh, okay. you do this all of the research with the stress condition. This is the mm -hmm. permanent for the psychological, physiological of the metarizium. This is permanent or not? No. Uh, if you grow the fungus in a different, uh, for example, conidia produced in a stress, for example, nutritive stress, and then uh, you transfer this fungus to a rich medium, uh, this, the second generation will be lost the tolerance. So it's not a genetic, it's phenotypical. Okay, thank you, Prof. And mm -hmm. this is the ask from Julio Elsfield Roosevelt. They ask, uh, she asked what, what is the best carrier in formulation of Metarizium robertsi? in your research for so far? The best uh, failure in formulation. Best failure. Best carrier in formulation. Did you do the formulation to make the no. proposal of the uh, conidia? No, I never did the formulation. Uh, just the, just testing. Uh, uh, different stress condition, inducing priming or not. And uh, Ping, Pinkan Gadis Latureu uh, asks you, Prof, what is the rule and function of this type of fungus for the survival of other creatures? What is the rule and the function of this type of the fungus? What, what is the mechanism maybe Prof. C asks you about? How can the fungus can survive of this uh, stress condition? Okay, uh, mechanism that he, uh, what is the mechanism that he? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, that induce tolerance. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so there are many. Uh, the two I explained that is trehalosum and tall. The third that I explained is uh, heat shock proteins. But there are also enzymes like catalase, superoxidismutase, 
and the peroxidase that you also induce higher tolerance. Unfortunately, uh, I never studied these enzymes because my lab do not have uh, equipment to do these studies. Uh, I hope the questions, uh, the answer is uh, good here for all of the participants who was who asked me. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Giorgio. Uh, for this, I think time is uh, up. And about Dr. Giorgio, your... can I ask? Yeah, of course. Uh, I have Lee, a question. Please, yes, yes, okay. of course, please, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, Prof, about the, uh, you now you're using uh, trichoderma against uh, metarizium. Uh, trichoderma is already uh -huh. high competition. Uh, do you think if you use we uh, use uh, fusarium or another uh, plant pathogen, plant fungal pathogen, is low competition? Maybe we saw something uh, another uh, results or oh, our competition between yes, metarizium uh, and uh, behavior. You it's like a good idea, Dr. Light. Maybe we can do together and publish with Dr. Dahlia and you. That you be, oh, okay. uh, I, never, I never think about that. Oh, okay, bro. Because the Bivaria is also low growth and low competition. Um, uh -huh. Maybe that found and get yeah. something results. Uh, yeah, let's, if you let's do that. Yeah, I have, yeah, I oh, have okay. in my Shower students and now, and then maybe we can publish together this study. I never think about. Okay, okay. I will prepare some, uh, uh, because the blood pathogen, blood fungal pathogen, it is already low computation. Maybe you uh -huh. select some uh, blood pat fungal pathogen. And also, in fact, yeah. we think something uh, like uh, Bulgaria or another uh, aspergillus also already all time in uh, environmental the penicillin uh -huh. and aspergillus is high uh, uh -huh. reading in the fields. But this, yes, we select some some from blunt fungal pathogens, some interpathogenic. Fungi, and we can select also with some another uh, uh, fungal like Penicillium and Aspergillus because this two fungal or Cladosporium also this uh -huh. this fungi it is already all time in the uh, environmental and the soil and uh -huh. okay yes yeah, so it Thank you, be very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I can do that and then we publish together our, our first paper. Okay. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh -huh. Inshallah. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Thank you very much. I really honored uh -huh. by giving this talk and then uh, I really appreciate your invitation. And I'm really sorry, Dr. Light, because uh, we Little moved it to this new city uh, in December, and then uh, everything need to to uh, uh, know more about the city. And then uh, I didn't have time to to give this talk before. Okay, bro. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Lee. You. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Dorizio. Welcome. Is any Welcome in this Zoom? I think it's enough uh, for uh, this general lecture, yeah, Prof. Dorizio. Uh, I would like to give the some of a uh, conclusion. Looking for the biological control for the fungus is very interesting. You give us the insightful. If you want to make a good, very good biological control, for example, metarizium, uh, Roberti, we can do so many uh, effects of the environmental. For example, heat shock, osmotic stress, 
Congo red wall stress, acidic alkaline, uh, conidia production uh, and nutrition. So many mm -hmm. factor we can do a lot of in this uh, great research with a deep conclusion. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for your lecture today. And I hope this is not the end, but this is the first we met. Yes. And we can uh -huh. do a lot of with our university, Prof. Dorazio. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Of too. Applause for Dr. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And please, I uh -huh. give uh, the time to the Isaac. Okay. So you close? Uh, yes, uh, I give the time to the mod, uh, to the MC uh, Rivaldi or Isaac. Please to close uh -huh. this. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Rosio, for the lecture. Thank and you. That's for us. And uh -huh. thank you, See you. Uh, also for Dr. Daria for leading uh, this discussion. For appreciation, uh -huh. maybe we have uh, something for all speakers. So the operator, please uh, present the certificate for Professor Rosio. Something with the signal connection. Yeah, uh, we wait the operator to present the certificate. Uh, prof, you have problem with the internet. Now tell uh, tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe we close here, Doctor Let. Yeah, without uh, or do you want to give something? Please refer me because Prof leave. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. You want uh, something? Okay. Yeah, maybe uh, we will uh, take a picture for Professor Drozio. Okay. Okay. Please, uh, operator, to take a picture. I will send to him. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Next, uh, we will give the certificate. Welcome for. for okay. Welcome, doctor. Okay. Now I send to him by WhatsApp. It's for you, Dr. Lee. <laughs> okay, we will take a picture now. Okay. okay one, I take a picture for me. Three. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for Dr. Dahlia for other, and other uh, one researchers and students. Okay, next we will give the certificate for Dr. Dahlia. Please, uh -huh. operator. Uh, thank you so much, Rifaldi, and all of the students. Yeah. It's very great lecture. Thank you. We will take a picture now. One, okay. two, three. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Dr. Dalia. Thank you. And now uh, I will send this to Izad. Okay, thanks for the Professor Dozio and thanks for 
uh, Dr. Lai, thanks for Dr. Dahlia for this lecture and new insight for us. Uh, for uh, we are in the last of meetings. Thanks to all active participants participation in this lecture before we end this meeting let's take some documentation for all participants okay uh, for all participants can you uh, open camera to take documentation first okay Okay, um, we will uh, take a picture for documentation. I will lead this one, two, three. Next slide, one, two, three. Next slide, one, two, three. Okay, thanks for all participants uh, for joining this general lecture. We will uh, meet at the uh, next general lecture. Goodbye okay. and see you at the next lecture. Thank and you don't for forget to fill the yeah. attendance for our participants. Don't forget to fill the attendance for the certificate for certi certificate. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, goodbye and see you and the next lecture. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Terima kasih Bu Fanti, Pak Rizky, Bu Yani, and all of the lecture. Thank you, Dr. Lay. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Dr. Lay. See, see you later. See you later. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih ya, semua. Izin di close ya. Terima kasih juga. Ya. Sukses ya.